Welcome back to the channel for more travels. This time, Aaron and I are exploring some of the best that Chile has to offer. Starting off here in the capital of Santiago, we'll learn more about the history of this dynamic city and make our way to the top of it for some amazing views. Afterwards, we'll grab a car and head west to the Pacific coast and enjoy the colorful Valparaiso and Vina del Mar. Thanks for coming along. After taking a short flight from Mendoza, Argentina, over the Andes mountain range to Santiago, we hit the ground running and stopped by a few of the most notable landmarks in the city. Starting out at the Cerro Santa Lucia, or the Santa Lucia Hill, this park prominently features the Neptune Fountain. Built around 1900 and featuring dramatic architecture, this fountain sparkles in the Chilean sunshine and offers a bit of a respite from the sun for locals and tourists alike. Our next stop was Plaza de la Constitución to admire the Palacio de la Moneda. Being a bit of a government nerd, I always make it a point to try to see the legislative or executive buildings in other countries, and the Palacio houses the office of Chile's president. After getting our government fix, we made our way over to the central market of Santiago. We were both actually a bit disappointed by this, and I've since read that since it's become a big tourist stop, it's not quite the bustling market that it once was. After a bit more luck retrieving subway cards than we had in Buenos Aires, we hopped on to head to our last stop of the day. I'm happy to report that Santiago's subway system is great. It even boasts small libraries within some of its stations. And if you're lucky, you can even be treated to a live performance on board as you zip off to your destination. For the last stop of our first day in Santiago, we visited the Museo de la Memoria y los Derechos Humanos, or the Museum of Memory and Human Rights. Opened in 2010 and quickly gaining international renown, this museum delves deeply into the history and human rights violations that took place in Chile during the military dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet. After Pinochet took power in 1974, he ultimately shut down parliament and crushed political dissent by arresting, torturing, and murdering thousands of political opponents. Pinochet's regime lasted 17 years until 1990, and he was ultimately arrested in London in 1998 after being charged internationally with human rights violations. The museum features a wealth of information on this era via information boards, news clippings, video footage, and some interesting documents such as this classified one from U.S. President Reagan's Presidential Daily Brief. It's always humbling to learn about another nation's history in greater detail on the same soil it happened on, even, and sometimes especially, the darker periods. This museum leaves no doubt that Chileans are a strong and resilient people. The next day and before we left town, I wanted to climb the San Cristobal Hill, which seemed to provide the best view in the whole city. And so that's exactly what I did. You can choose to walk the hill, which takes a little over an hour and climbs 1,000 feet to an elevation of nearly 3,000 feet at the top. So I'm almost to the top and it hasn't been incredibly difficult. There are a couple of stops on the way up that provide water, bathroom, all that good stuff. But the views down on Santiago are just incredible. And there's cable cars going overhead of you and uh, constantly bikers going up and down like the one that's about to go by me right now. And uh, so to see those guys and gals zipping by as the city is far below them, 
it's just fun. All of them are going by with their speakers, blasting like Skrillex and all kinds of other music. So anyway, not terribly, terribly difficult, but um, if you have a hard time walking long distances as it is, or with inclines of any kind, would suggest taking the cable car up. Um, I'm probably gonna take it down just cause I'm trying to get back to Aaron as soon as possible so we can have dinner. She sat this one out, but uh, yeah, well worth the trip when you have views down on beautiful Santiago de Chile like that. Your payoff at the top of San Cristobal is this beautiful statue of the Virgin Mary, which is Santiago's answer to the Christ the Redeemer statue in Rio de Janeiro. Though I'm sure Chileans would make sure to note that this was built 23 years earlier. As you can see, the top features stunning 360 degree views of Santiago. In my experience, hikes like these aren't always worth it, but this one certainly is. That being said, I was excited to comfortably and lazily make my way back down the hill by a cable car. After getting this hike in, it was time to hop in our rental car and make our way about an hour and 30 minutes west to our new home base for a few days, Vina del Mar. As soon as we arrived, it was straight to the beach. Hola, from Vina del Mar, Chile. <laughs> As you can tell, it's a little overcast today. Um, we're expecting the sun to come out and burn off these clouds pretty shortly. That's what we read in the reviews at least. We'll see if those are true. Uh, but just here to enjoy a little bit of sand, sun, and fun. As you can tell, there are so many of these, what we think are apartments, perched up on the hill with a view of the ocean. So certainly looks like prime real estate. Anyway, we're gonna pay a little more attention to where we're walking here and uh, show you a little bit more of the beach, maybe a little bit of our football skills. Aaron's decided to join, play some football today. So, uh, le, le, le. After realizing football may not be the best for us to play on a busy beach, we visited a few other top sites in Pina del Mar. We were here a few days before the new year and we learned that on the Pacific coast of Chile, they hold the largest fireworks display in all of South America. And as you can see, the celebration kicks off early. A local museum also displays a real Moai statue originally from Chile's Easter Island. All right, here we are at Disney World. Just kidding, this looks like the front of Disney World to me. It's the flower clock here in Vina del Mar. So Chile hosted the World Cup in 1962 and this was installed for that. So it's very touristy. As you can see, it's right by the water and there's some other cool floral arrangements here. But um, it's still worth a visit if you have some time to kill. Probably not a must see if you're here in uh, Vina del Mar. After our introduction to Vina del Mar, we checked in at our accommodations. Hotel Oceanic, while being a little dated, is a fantastic value. We paid about 75 US dollars per night, which is pretty incredible for these views of the ocean waves crashing against the hotel and the gorgeous sunsets we were treated to each night. Just 20 minutes south down Avenida España from Vina del Mar is Valparaiso. Valparaiso is sort of like Vina del Mar's cousin city, though it boasts a noticeably different flair, which we were excited to explore, starting with this famous empanada shop.
All right, so we just picked up six empanadas at Deliciales Express. Uh, it's a very famous empanada place that you'll see on pretty much any YouTuber's uh, to-do list. And um, basically this place has like 81 different types of empanadas with different ingredients. The, the menu that we will show you right here, it doesn't really uh, look as diverse as it was suggested beforehand. Most of the things have like cheese, a meat, and then maybe something a little bit different. So like I said, we got six empanadas and it was like 20,000 Chilean pesos, which is about 23 US dollars. So Way too many, they're huge. Yeah, that's just half of one right there. But Erin, what did you get? Um, so this one is empanada de queso y jamón y piña, which is cheese, ham, and pineapple. So basically it's a Hawaiian pizza inside of an empanada. But we just took a couple of steps up that staircase that we just showed and uh, we're in this bright colored alleyway and just enjoying these and uh, we'll see how they go. Yeah, I'm glad that we're going to be climbing a lot today, working off our empanadas. We were admittedly very fortunate to be here on a bright sunny day after our cloudy start at the beach, but it's hard not to be in a good mood walking around a town this colorful regardless of how many steps may be necessary to navigate it. Popping into little mom and pop shops for souvenirs and ice cream and taking the 100 plus year old funiculars up and down some of these hills is truly all part of the experience here in Valparaiso. which is just cable car in Spanish. But I gave her 2,000 peso, which is about $2.34 US. And she proceeded to give me all this in change, which is about 1,900 peso. So the funiculars cost 50 peso each, which is about six cents US. So a little pro tip for anybody that arrives here and uh, decides to pick the funiculars in Valparaiso. After one last pisco sour, which are delicious by the way, and originally from Peru actually, and a final walk along the ocean, it was time for us to say goodbye to Chile for now. So here we are on the coast, the Pacific coast of Chile in Vina del Mar, signing off for this video featuring the beautiful country of Chile. We traveled together to Santiago. We traveled here out west to Vina del Mar and enjoyed a day in Valparaiso as well. And I hope that you enjoyed all that Chile has to offer. There's certainly much, much more, but uh, Aaron and I did our best to capture as much of it as we could. And uh, this is actually the end of our South America trip. So um, we have the video in Argentina, we have the video here in Chile, and uh, excited to um, bring this to you now but uh sad to, to go home but there's always a trip coming up and uh, uh oh some guys shouting at, at people i thought for at first they didn't pay or something like that but i think he was just being very helpful and telling them the next stops but uh yeah how have you enjoyed this trip aaron uh it has been a fantastic trip we have seen a lot we have flexed our Mui mall Spanish skills that are still muy mal, but maybe work in progress. Un poquito better. <laughs> I don't even know um, But it's starting to get a little Chile in Chile. So I think it's time to go back to the hotel where we're going to take a little dip in our dip pool and then pack up to go back to very Chile, Boston. <laughs> Something like that. Um, we'll see how much of that gets edited out. Just kidding, she's my wife. She has uh, editorial discretion on this stuff. Really just can't say uh, enough about Chile. I think that if you're gonna stop in Chile at all, and you're gonna stop in the capital in Santiago, it is well worth renting a car, coming out to the west coast, seeing what these beautiful beaches 
have to offer. I think this is uh, a cheaper version of California in a lot of ways. And I uh, can't really ask for more than that. If you, if you do. You're a jerk. You're a jerk. You're a jerk. That's all there is to it. We will see you next from the southern part of another continent, Africa. We got a trip coming up in April that we're uh, dubbing our honeymoon, actually. About a year and a half, almost two years after we got married. But uh, we're traveling to South Africa, Namibia, uh, maybe Eswatini and then uh, Mauritius as well, the island of Mauritius. So very excited about that and looking forward to, to catching you then.